மார்னிங் குட் மார்னிங் குட் மார்னிங் சத்யபிரியா விஷாலினி மிருதுலா ஷம்லி ஸ்ரீதக்ஷா அர்ஷியா வெங்கட் சுகன் ஜீனா பிரியா சூர்யா ரூபா குட் மார்னிங் கைஸ் ஸ்ரீதுர்கா குட் மார்னிங் அனுவர்ஷினி அஷ்ரஃப் மார்னிங் okay 16 members there hope you guys already subscribed uh, for this uh, channel right so i can see one or two subscribe i didn't see everyone uh, subscribe vijay mohan vijaya mohan good morning yeah okay fine so uh, uh today we are going to uh, now had a uh, uh, one small letter a uh, small uh, chapter that is uh, reproductive health right what are the highlights that we have to focus in this reproductive health will be dealt and the other lesson is uh, reproduction right so uh, sexual reproduction flowering plants right uh, in this uh, during uh, uh you know uh, academics you might have uh, practiced this lessons very well in 12th standard right so uh, we have to we will be touching up the you know outlines and uh, one more thing guys okay 24 members came so i'm going to give three types of worksheets okay daily i'll give three types of worksheets for two subjects botany and zoology so that you will have six six worksheets every day and you should go through all the six worksheets and you have to solve them i will give an approach also how to uh, you know go ahead with this i will just uh, tell one or two minutes about that and we will start the class because i am waiting for others to join let let's wait one more minute is that okay okay good morning tarun good morning ra krithik chitrabanu சிவகண்ணன் குட் மார்னிங் ஆல்மோஸ்ட் ஆல் கேம் ஓகே ஸோ இஸ் மை வாய்ஸ் எவ்ரி திங் இஸ் ஆடபிள் யூ ஆர் ஏபிள் டு சி மீ கிளியர் சம் வாட் நா இஸ் இயர் குட் மார்னிங் Sharuk ji good morning yeah okay then we'll start almost all everyone came so i'm giving uh, three type of uh, worksheets and it will be a huge help for you it will be huge help for you uh, and uh, you, uh, let me know sheets i'm going to type here just a minute yeah okay these are the three types of worksheets one is outline of the chapter so whatever i am discussing right now right uh, the entire uh, important uh, aspects and uh, uh, confusing concepts right so day by day we will uh, try to improve uh, second thing second thing is 32 mathiyavarna good morning uh, 32 year uh, 32 years of previous years questions this 32 years you may be wondering neat is established only few years back right 32 years of a a a i p m t and neat okay all old papers will be astray already sent you would have gone through and the third worksheet is daily practice once you see all the uh, questions of previous years right there is a chance that there would be some concepts would be repeating also so this year right 
and the third worksheet is daily practice you know i'll give uh, with explanation key and explanation at the end okay we will decide uh, by 6 pm if you can uh, do that worksheet right you you tell me whether you can uh, do worksheet by your own test and then you will see the need, uh, uh, key or shall i force the key also for daily practice which is better for daily practice shall i post key first or later which is which you opt the third worksheet third third type of worksheet okay so by by what time okay anvashni i will post a key for you separately okay first is that okay and remaining uh, most of the people are saying later the school okay anvashni i will uh, i will send to you separately first vijay mohan uh, who is this vijay mohan vijay mohan Vijay Mohan, actual name. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. One thing you can do. Okay, one thing you can do. I will post. Need uh, you know? I think fifty, fifty, fifty percent of people are saying first and then later. what i can do whoever wants to see the access the key first you access the key first whoever wants to see later you see key later as simple as that that's it okay no more no more uh, you know uh, confusions okay i will post key separately after the questions at the same time whoever wants to access the key first and explanation you go through it and whoever wants to come back after testing yourself you go back as simple as that okay that is a third thing okay so with this three worksheets daily six worksheets will come botany 3 geology 3 that's it now let's go into the uh, you know uh, today's uh, uh, topic is, is that okay I, am i clear guys <coughs> am i clear <coughs> sorry am i clear everyone okay thank you thank you thank you so let's move on first we'll deal with the chapter 2 botany that is uh, sexual uh, reproduction okay chapter 2 the uh, chapter 2 okay now we'll start with chapter 2 because the uh, chapter 4 is very small putty chapter right so we can uh, quickly finish it and the uh, the important aspects of those lessons also will be little limited but there would be some confusing things also that we will address but this lesson is uh, comparatively you know you have lot of uh, concept you know you know lot of uh, you know things to memorize and uh, there might be few confusion areas also let's finish this botany and then we'll go for uh, geology and you are all very much well with this uh, for first uh, you know reproductive reproduction unit as well so but to start with you know sexual reproduction uh, you know flowering plants right uh, where we have seen this this flowering plants dominating the plant kingdom right and uh, in evolution we already talked about this right and we already even talked in previous lesson that is the fertilization can be you know divided into pre fertilization fertilization and post fertilization events in this what we are going to do is we are going to you know Uh, go in depth uh, of the uh, organs that are involved in this pre-fertilization, fertilization, and post-fertilization changes. So, as an outline, we learned in first lesson. So that's what first lesson is not that important. When it comes to second lesson, comparatively, first lesson, second lesson is little important, and you will have uh, uh, much uh, concepts in it. Is that clear? And coming to the outline. So, in the structure of flower, we will be talking about the structure of. Flower. Okay, 
So structure of flower where you have got uh, androecium, the male reproductive parts, gynecium, female reproductive part. These are all you learned in even six standard or seven standards. But here, what is the most important uh, aspects that you have to cover is anther. Is it a bilobe, right? So if it is a bilobe, what are the examples of bilobe anthers, right? So you may expect questions on, uh, you know, uh, examples of anthers which are bilobed. Okay, so you would have uh, gone through some, uh, you know, practicals also, right? You have done this pollen juice germination. By the time uh, uh, you, you have got uh, uh, pretty much examples of these types of uh, anthers as well. And when it comes to, uh, you know, this uh, male reproductive parts, andricium, right, stamens, and their parts, filament anther, right? And you have got within the anther, when you take cross section of anther, you will find, uh, you, know, uh, you know, different layers. For example, endo, en uh, you know, epidermis, endothecium, right? Epidermis, endothecium, middle layers. So in here in anther, we will be mostly talking about microspore mother cells. How these MMCs would give rise to pollen, right? What are the divisions that do occur is the main important aspect when it comes to, you know, for example, just like how we deal uh, uh, with uh, with the gametogenesis, right? In the gametogenesis, we, we have dealt with uh, some small uh, uh, problems. Like if this, uh, my, my, uh, if this sporangiogonia, you know, sporangiogonia cells would divide or spermatocytes would divide, how many sperm, sperms would lead to formation. Like that simple, uh, simple numericals may, you can, you may expect from this. Uh, concept that is microspore mother cells as well as megaspore mother cells, right? When it comes to uh, transfer section of anther, we we more focus on the microsporangia. So microsporangia you need to be remembering and the associated tissues like tapetum. So tapetum you need to be extremely uh, remembering tapetum and its functions. So tapetum is nothing but innermost layer which nourishes the developing pollen grains, right? So who actually nourishes this pollen grains? So these are the tepitum. So tepitum is one of the uh, things that you need to remember. So in this, you have different layers, uh, epidermis, uh, endo, uh, endothecium, and middle layers. Within middle layers, you will contain microspore mother cells, which give rise to pollen grain, right? And then tepitum, which actually surrounds them and then nourishes them. So important aspect is, Tepetum and its functions, right? And tepetum, what uh, what is the actually condition of nuclei, right? In cells, cells, uh, cell division uh, uh, chapter we studied in mitosis. There is syncytium, right? It means more than one nucleus will be present in a cell. So exactly when you, when you see this tepetum cells. Cells of this tepetum contain dense cytoplasm and generally have more than one nucleus. So this tepetum would be a more important aspect that you can uh, revise off. Okay. So structure of microsporangium, you are very well with this structure of microsporangium. And uh, within this microsporangium, uh, you know, there is different types of tissue. For example, sporogenous tissues, right? Sporogenous tissue is nothing but... Uh, <coughs> Uh, you know, uh, uh, which forms this uh, spores, nothing but uh, pollen grain, right? By what process? Microsporogenesis. And when it comes to female part, we say megasporogenesis. And all these aspects are free, free fertilizational, free fertilization events. Why is that? Because to gamete transfer to occur, for example, pollen grains are of different types and their dehis, they actually fly few are having some kind of wing like structures few are light few travel through you know water medium so this force has caused some gamete transfer at the same time uh, uh, you know after gamete transfer you will have this fusion that is fertilization events now we are talking about pre pre fertilization events and the associated structures or the structures and the associated events. So we are talking about microsporogenesis that occurs in the anther. If you take uh, anther's cross section, it will look like a butterfly and you are well, well with it, right? And here you need to remember about the pollen mother cell. 
right? Uh, how these microspores form a pollen mother cells, that is PMCs. Sometimes the shortcuts also will be used. So PMCs are nothing but pollen mother cells, right? So this formation of pollen mother cells, right? The, or formation of this uh, microspores, right? Microspores, which actually develop into pollen grain, right? So this microspores are developing from pollen mother cells, PMCs, through which divisions? So my question is, uh, okay, Abhiniti. Yeah, my question is, my question is, how, by what divisions this, uh, this uh, microspores are forming from PMCs? You should answer in comment session. By what divisions the microspores are forming? Yeah. Everyone, ma? Others? Mitosis, ma? Arun, mitosis, is it? I'm asking about. Formation of microspores from a pollen mother cell, PMCs. Microsporogenesis is of meiosis. Because this is sporo sporogenous tissue. See, this is the confusing aspect. Whether you will be confused whether it is a meiosis or mitosis. But the thumb rule is that whenever there is a deployed uh, mother cell or a spor sporangia or sporogenous tissue is there, that has to form gametes. Gametes would start forming, especially in a eukaryotic uh, sexual reproduction, higher plants and animals, meiosis would occur and then mitosis would, would be proceeded to form gametes, right? So first meiosis would occur to form the microspores and then later nothing but the tetrads and then uh, eventually pollen grain. Now you guys understood? Yeah, meiosis is correct. So this is the confusing area. That's why we are touching this. Now let's come to pollen grain. So in this my, uh, in this microsporogenesis, this has this aspect you need to. Uh, sorry, I'm looking uh, in your comment session. That's why I'm looking in this direction. Okay, I will try to focus here. So in this concept, microsporogenesis uh, or megasporogenesis, you need to remember about the divisions, as simple as that. And then coming to the next thing, that is pollen grain, that is male gametophyte. So it has different uh, layers: exon, intent, vegetative cell, generative cell. And you need to know even uh, the uh, you know uh, functions of this exon, intent, uh, uh, vegetative cell, and generative cell, right? Especially, uh, what is the number of uh, uh, you know uh, cells that is vegetative cell and generative cell? So if you see this, a uh, mature pollen grain may have two types of cells. That is, one is vegetative cell and a generative cell. When it comes to exon, sporo. Polonin. So this sporopollenin is what you have to focus. So you may ask questions that what is the function of this sporopollenin? What is the, whether it is an organic material or inorganic material? Mostly it will be organic material at the same time. What is its function? It is highly resistant organic material, sporopollenin. And it will be making this uh, outer coat of the po uh, pollen grain so hard because of this presence of this organic material. So that it can withstand with high temperatures and strong acids and alkali because it is harsh conditions suddenly there is an increase in temperature suddenly there is a change in ph so how come this uh, sports would actually you know suspend themselves and protect themselves for the later favorable condition so exen in exen this sporopollenin is very important aspect you need to remember right and then coming to indent uh, in ten, uh, you will you will have uh, cellulosic and uh, you know pectin. So it is made up of cellulose and pectin. So these are the uh, biomolecules composition. Maybe they may ask a section A, section B like this. Uh, for example, column A, column B, sporopollenin, which is that uh, uh, you know uh, in ten, uh, in exon, in ten, vegetative cell, generative cell, and they may give that. Uh, 
you know, uh, in, in uh, column B, they may give cellulose pectin uh, sporopollenin. So you need to match and you have to identify the options as simple as that. So these are the biomolecules you need to concentrate in this topic as simple as that. Okay. And even economic importance of uh, pollen grains, uh, especially the storage. And here, the most important aspect that you need to remember is what is the uh, uh, what is the temperature of the liquid nitrogen? Are you able to follow, guys? What is the temperature of liquid nitrogen? And what are the uses of the liquid nitrogen? Why liquid nitrogen came in this topic? Hmm, Rupa, minus 196 watt, kilometers up. <laughs> okay, 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 fine. 190 degree, somewhere than 196, sir. Kelvinna, Era Tarun. Yeah, cryo preservation, Steve Blason, correct. And the one who is telling that it's minus 196 uh, degrees uh, uh, is of, uh, uh, no, correct answer, right? Especially the Poland Bank. For example, if you remember the strategies for enhancement of food, food right? So we are taking, collecting seeds and all like in the in the same aspect, we try, we use this uh, cryo preservation method. So. This is one of the aspect. So there would be a confusing numbers. So maybe a minus 196 or they may have minus 180 like that. They may give some options. So you need to remember that. <clears throat> right. And then coming to gynesium, gynesium of different, uh, you know, uh, you know, different types based upon the pistil that is monocarpillary, multicarpillary, right? This carpels or nothing but this, uh, you know, arrangement of pistils, right? The, if it is a single pistil containing gynesium, right? Uh, uh, you know, it it has it. Uh, if if we have it is mono mono monocarpillary or it is multi -car multi carpillary. Carpillary. Okay. So this is uh, carpillary is something which we are talking about pistil. Monocarpillary or multi carpillary is what uh, and their examples you need to. Oops. Sorry. So, so you need to focus on those examples as simple as it. Okay. <clears throat> so in the megasporogenesis, right? We are talking about the ovule. So ovule, you have uh, cirrhinotropic, orthonotropic, right? Anotropic. You know different types of uh, arrangement of this ovule based upon the micropylar region. If you if you consider this as an ovule, right? If this is an uh, what do you say? Opening of the ovule, right? O, o, you know, uh, where the pollen tube enters, there is an arrangement of this, what do you say? Uh, uh, this, uh, you know, this ovule, right? For example, it will be like this, you know, 90 degrees or in this way, you know, or sometimes it, it is 360 degrees. So these are the different types of ovules you need to touch, right? So especially uh, when when comes to o, you know this uh, ovule uh, or ovary, so you need to understand each and every you know especially uh, the important uh, function of micropylar region. What is a micropylar region? What it what it does is important. At the same time, <coughs> um, new cells, right? So integuments. So, uh, you know, if you see this, uh, uh, you know, chalazal end, okay, chalazal end is something which is, uh, for you, for, for example, if you consider this is an uh, micropylar region, opposite to the micropylar region, you will have chalazal end, right? So this, this chalazal end has got this uh, integuments, right, uh, enclosed within like, uh, you know, integuments, there are, there are some cells called new cells, okay? So here, new cellus is important to remember. Okay. So 
are you able to follow? Are you able to follow, guys? Yeah. Okay. So now coming to the megasporogenesis. First we talked about microsporogenesis. Now megasporogenesis. I'm going very fast because you know uh, uh, these chapters we already revised and I told very clearly this is just an outline briefing session, outline session. So only important uh, uh, hot uh, aspects or all. Uh, important concepts and confusing concepts will be touched and explored. That's it. I already asked that if you guys have any anything needs to be explained, you can post me so that I can uh, deal in the later sessions. So when we talk about uh, spore mother cell, that is PMCs, here we, we talked about uh, MMCs, that is megaspore mother cell, right? So these megaspore mother cells undergo again the same way. Megasporogenesis is formation of uh, nothing but, uh, you know, Megaspores. So four megaspores are formed by meiosis, as simple as that, right? So the same meiosis occurs uh, in the you know uh, what do you say meiotic divisions, right? Within the meiotic division, we already studied in cell uh, you know cell division and uh, you know uh, uh, cell division lesson, right? So in meiosis, meiosis one and two, and meiosis two is similar to the mitosis and results in the formation of four megaspores in this case of megasporogenesis right and tetrad formation etc and coming to most important aspects in this is the nuclear nucleate condition okay so embryo sac contains uh, you know uh, what are the uh, you know how many nucleate does this embryo sac contains In what stage, uh, you know, uh, you know the nuclei. So, what what are the uh, nucleate stages we study actually? Eight or five or six or what is the nucleate nucleate uh, stages? Eight nucleated stages. Okay. Okay, so you can see that in embryo sac, there is a chalazal and there is a micropylar, micropylar and, right, T and here, uh, you know, you will have at the antipodals, right, chalazal and antipodals, at the same time, micropylar synergies, and then centrally located to nuclear. So, 3 plus 3 plus 2, 8 nuclear condition. And cell stage, what is a cell stage? Yeah, Matiwarana, correct? Yes, everyone correct. Yeah, Tarun, Shamili, yeah, correct. Seven celled, eight nucleated cell. Very good. Okay, as simple as that, Rahul. Okay, and then uh, uh, you have to, uh, uh, here uh, you need to uh, focus on the type of pollinations, right? So, in the pollination is concerned in practicals also, you guys have uh, studied about it. You no know, hydrophily, anemophily, entomophily, etc. Right? So, for example, self pollination, cross pollination, those uh, terminology you need to be just revising. That's it. And examples. So, autogamy, self pollination occurs in which, which uh, plants? Like uh, viola is one of the plant, uh, common pansy, we say, right? The viola, where you will find this autogamy. So, we are talking about pollination. Pollination is nothing but again we are not we are talking about gamete transfer right so once the uh, pre-fertilization events that is gametes are formed now we are talking about how these gametes are actually you know uh, you know uh, they are uh, traveling uh, towards the o o ovule or ovule so that to form or to get fertilized so now we are talking about pollination different types of pollination and their examples and uh, if there is any exception that we need to focus more. For example, in the case of autogamy, right, self-pollination occurs in viola and oxalis, right, I will post this, uh, uh, you know, outline like yesterday so that you can quickly go to it, right, and and if you see this, uh, you know, uh, histogamous and chasmogamous, uh, you know, uh, flowers, so these terminologies are important, okay, 
So for example, Chasmogamous uh, flowers are nothing but they are similar to flowers of their species with exposed anthers and stigma. So there's ant stigmas, stigmas and anthers are exposed, right? But uh, you know, Clastogamous flowers or they do not open at all, right? So that's what they undergo self pollination. So that's a simple logic, as simple as that, right? Like that, you have xeno, uh, xenogamy, you, you have uh, netogamy, right? That is, uh, you know, this how this pollen are transferring. So you may get all these four types, right? Chasmogamous, clistogamous, netogamy, and xenogamy. And the mode of transfer of pollen. So it can be matched the following. So they give options one A, uh, A, B, C, D, and you have to pick it, right? In the netogamy of the pollination, in this, or what is the type of pollination is a pollen range transfer from anther to stigma of another flower of the same plant right within the same plant but the you know this pollen is transferring from one flower to other flower but within the same plant so this is one type of cell pollination xenogamy is something pollen grains transfer from anther to the stigma of different plants right so that it brings uh, you know kind of genetically different pollen grains to stigma so these are the different types uh, of pollination you see, especially in self pollination. You got you 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 will be talking about autogamy. Like that we have uh, we have got uh, uh, netogamy and xenogamy. So xenogamy is I told right xenografts right in the same way. This pollen grain is transferred to the other plant, so it is increasing the genetic variability, right? So they may ask you to arrange the, based upon the variability also, which uh, which type of pollination would increase the genetic variability. Arrange in the order. So may, you have to arrange in the order, as simple as that. So you, you, they may play with uh, all these uh, concepts. Okay. So this is about the types of pollination. One is self type of pollination. One is cross pollination, right? Within the uh, within the uh, you know, uh, uh, within the uh, same uh, kind of a plant, but there is a xeno xenogamy. <coughs> there is a xenogamy where different plants are involved, so that it is increasing the genetic variability too much. At the same time, it is bringing the pollen of other plants as well. So these are the three types of pollination. Is it clear? What is this? Uh, <coughs> agents. Agents of pollination is abiotic components or biotic components. In this, you need to focus on the terminology again. What are entomophilic, right? What are entomophilous uh, flowers or uh, what are entomophila, uh, entomophilous uh, uh, pollinating flowers, etc. Right? Uh, uh, so uh, what are the, uh, no, you don't need to write all these things uh, because this is not the academics. So you need to focus on the examples, which which flowers actually undergo a biotic, uh, use the biotic agents, which flowers uh, would use uh, abiotic components like wind and water, okay? So those are the uh, examples you need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, practice. So they may give in one column that all the types of the gamete, uh, what is this, uh, gamete transfer agents, pollen transfer agents, and uh, their mode. For example, valisneria they will give. And whether you have to find out this valisneria, uh, pollen is uh, is actually, uh, you know, uh, pollen transfer is taken by water or wind or animals. So you need to, you know, match the following. So these are the tricky part. So practice in a such a way that you have you can re really uh, relate to it it means take the examples right and take uh, uh, right at one side you can write uh, what is a type of transfer like through water or through wind or through animal or like that so you can see it and revise very easily okay
so when it comes to you know breeding devices right self pollination cross pollination we use we and we talk about uh, plant breeding technique we already covered about the more extensively in the in the case of uh, plant breeding uh, these uh, out breeding devices we already covered right so why we do this uh, self pollination uh, you know how we actually avoid this self pollination and how can we do this cross pollination to get the genetic variability and desired characteristics we already talked but you go through this worksheet once again okay <clears throat> and wherever there is a cell condition or nucleated condition you need to write it in your running notes or practice notes okay what is emasculation okay that is one thing you need to remember when we use emasculation when we use bagging what is the difference between them right so those things you need to cover once once again okay so in the case of fertilization now we are at the fertilization so once the gamete transfer is occurred so we now we are talking about fertilization so in this fertilization we talk about uh, uh, you know pmc uh, p p p e c that is uh, primary endosperm right uh, primary endosperm cell and we will, even we will talk about pen primary endosperm uh, nucleus i know at the same time you need to even remember that what leads to what right uh and what is the what is the important aspects of this pen right for example if you take a coconut what is the uh, uh, what is the actually the water is actually what is the water is right? it's a liquid endosperm right so how this uh, how this embryo actually develops into that type of liquid endosperm that you need to focus and which actually you know these all these things will be covered in uh, 11th standard actually uh, especially right when we talk about uh, uh, you know uh, this uh, physio physiological aspects we will uh, once again we will try to touch it so when we uh, when we talk about this nuclei right uh, nucleate condition right triple fusion you need to remember and embryo formation and endosperm development also it's very important okay so in endosperm development what forms what okay and which nourishes right for example endosperm cells are filled with reserve food material so this is the function of endosperm right so functions of endosperm at the same time coconut water is what uh, uh, you need to remember because this endosperm becomes cellular due to the cell wall formation if you see in uh, the tender coconut is the tender coconut is nothing but the free nuclear endosperm right so the water what we drink is a uh, thousands of nuclei what we are drinking right so that is a case so in this we need to touch these aspects endosperm and their uses and the how this endosperm is formed from the embryo so pen is there primary uh, you know uh, what do you say uh, you have got uh, primary endosperm nucleus right there are different divisions occurs and how this primary endosperm is developed and from where it is developed if you see this primary endosperm cell they are uh, you know uh, the centrally located cells are there na those will undergo triple fusion this triple fusion will be resulting in this primary endosperm cell and there is a zygote formation that's what we say double fertilization one forms the endosperm and one forms the zygote so this endosperm which is formed which nourishes this zygote and then entire embryo as simple as it Yeah, free nuclear. Uh, NCERT exams or no, or should we refer the need book also? You can refer need book as well as what I'm giving right now, right? Uh, this uh, material outline. This this would be more than enough. Before going to need book itself, you go for this uh, outline thing so that it will be more easy. Okay, are you able to follow, guys? okay right and then uh, next part is that embryo development so in embryo development right uh, uh, what you need to focus is um, 
should tell them when when we talk about this uh, you know embryo development we talk about the monocotyledon embryo and dicotyledonous embryo right so in this you need to uh, understand the functions of uh, you know cotyledons right and the how they are arranged as well as uh, uh, you know at the same time uh, how this polyp polyptoids or primordia it means from that only the whole uh, plant would be arising right so those things we need to focus on so you have to focus on how this mono uh, mono uh, you know monocotyledonous uh, uh, you know embryos and dicotyledonous embryos would be appearing the remaining you you know you have to really uh, worry about it but uh, functions of suspensor cells you know uh, how from which cells this radical cells are formed right which which cells this plumule are formed which cells this cotyledons are formed this is what you have to focus on coming to seeds which forms from ovule types of seeds non albuminous and albuminous and then uh, their examples right and coming to the uh, uh, you know once the seed is formed right at the same time seed is formed in the uh, uh, fruits which forms seeds right so here we talk about Uh, fruits and ovaries. When we uh, when we talk about fruits and ovaries, we will be touching about uh, different types of uh, what do you say fruits, like true fruits, false fruits, right? Uh, at the same time, we uh, we talk about uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, fleshy and dry also. So you have to remember what are true fruits examples, false fruit examples. I am giving this uh, worksheet to you so that you can simply go through it. Uh, the afternoon session for example true fruits contains uh, uh, you know uh, you know most cases the fruit develops only from ovary so when the fruit developing from the ovary is called uh, you know true fruits remaining are false fruits right so uh, for example apple strawberry cashew they are all false fruits other than other than other than the ovary if you remember the structure of this uh, you know uh, you know uh, you know uh, this female reproductive part right it will have ovary right is still ovary and then thalamus is there base like sitting uh, i'm sitting in the chair like that there is a thalamus so this thalamus would uh, develop into fruit not the ovary in the case of false fruits and the examples are uh, apple strawberry and cashew nut and parthenocarpic fruits are very uh, well known uh, where they are uh, Uh, where uh, if you see in that fruit develops without even uh, fertilization and this question was asked in uh, in neat uh, uh, sorry in academics as well right yeah we are talking about parthenocarpic fruits that is example is banana so fruit, fruits are developed without even just without even fertilization so in which parthenocarpic can be induced through the application of growth hormones also where we talk we will be touching in the last lesson of plant physiology 11 portions right plant growth uh, plant growth uh, you know promoters etc and coming to uh, last part of this lesson that is epomixis and polyembryony epomixis is very important thing that you need to uh, you know understand very clearly epomixis is a seed production without fertilization so this is something unusual or something exceptional so you need to definitely look into this epomixis and polyembryony is also something ex exceptional and this exceptional cases you need to focus on examples so how this epomi uh, 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 you know uh, epomixis uh, epomixis occurs in which uh, which kind of a seeds like for example citrus or mango varieties so those things you need to focus right so like that uh uh so uh, this is about this uh, you know uh, lesson right uh, sorry when comes to formation of uh, epomixis seeds for example astaceae members or grass members okay so when comes to citrus and mango varieties right where uh, uh, where you will find that nuclear cells undergo several divisions right surrounding the embryo sac right are you able to follow 
so this is about this lesson where you need to focus on ecomixis and polyembryony and their examples cell nucle uh, cell and nucleated conditions uh, at the same time different types of pollinations and pollinating agents and their medium and examples right types of flowers right at the same time anther uh, microsporogenesis megasporogenesis and which cells are nourishing the microspor uh, uh, pollen uh, mother cells uh, pollen mother cells and uh, megaspor uh, mother cells so these are the important aspects you need to touch is it clear shall we go to the next lesson sir will they ask question from diagram like labeling the parts uh, yeah they may ask ma absolutely Diagrammatic questions also can be expected. Srimati, yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's go to the next lesson. Uh, that is uh, reproductive health, and it's uh, a most uh, very small lesson. At the same time, uh, you know we can uh, uh, the concepts which it, which we cover in this will be uh, very less also. Okay. That's why if you see the entire schedule, the way I arranged is, you know, importance is there, but you can't spend the whole two, three days on this lesson because weightage is not comparatively high when compared to other lessons. Okay. So within this, within this the day itself, you need to complete these two chapters. If you spend, if you think that you want to postpone, it's a very bad idea, guys. Okay. We are trusting you and we are sitting at the home and we are doing this much means you can do more than that and you guys are all extremely interacting very well here and uh, hi Janil uh, I'm very happy to see uh, happy to see you know the interaction what we are going right now even in this crisis okay fine so uh, spy, I, I trust you and uh, you guys have to work on this worksheets also because I'm taking a lot of time to prepare this, take screenshots or uh, search some material insert, uh, which based upon the level of understanding also I'm doing it. So may, please make use of it. Okay. So now let's move to the next one. That is, uh, uh, and uh, uh, what is this? Uh, the next lesson we are talking about uh, reproductive health so when we talk about reproductive health right uh, uh, in this we need to uh, you know remember uh, the aspects of the government what exactly the steps taken by the government right to actually keep up the population those steps you need to be because they may give correct or incorrect statements Pick the correct statement, pick the incorrect statements. You need to be extremely careful when you're attending this type of a questions where, uh, where you may fall under the trap. Sometimes, you know, in a rush, you know, here in the question, it will be incorrect, but you will choose the correct one. So it will be, uh, uh, you have to be extremely careful when you're really uh, uh, attending those type of a questions. Okay, so pick the right statements. Right, A and B is correct. A alone is correct. B is correct, incorrect. So you should be extremely careful, and especially the government steps which are taken can be asked in that type of a question, as simple as it. Okay, population explosion, and uh, what are the measures that uh, you know government took? So that is the uh, one of the control measures they may ask in in the case of uh, correct or incorrect statements. Okay. And coming to contraceptive methods, we have got different types of methods, right? So we talk about natural and traditional methods. So from one from one method to other method, there is a degree of increased uh, efficiency, right? So at the same time, there will be some side effects also. So that's what uh, even in our class, even uh, either A1 or A2, I gave, uh, I taught these lessons at the level of need. Now it will make sense when you're reading any book, right? When we talk about this geology aspects, right? So you will not be finding that much uh, difficult uh, when even the 12th standard geology portions are very, very much uh, difficult. 
right if you face any difficulties in any of the botany or zoology 12th or 11th you please let me know right but uh, uh, when it comes to this contraceptive methods we can uh, divide it into natural methods or traditional methods or barrier methods and we have got uh, you know uids and then oral contraceptives right and then finally we have got uh, injectables and surgical methods so that uh, when you preparing right you can make a flow chart like this so this is the first method second method third method fourth method fifth method sixth method so which is more efficient right what are what are all those things involved uh, for example um, in natural methods so there is a contraceptive methods uh, you know uh, one aspect of contraceptive methods and you divide into six boxes so first box talks about natural and traditional methods where in that again there are subdivisions periodic absence right so you may get uh, confused with what is actually pe pe uh, periodic uh, absentees right uh, uh, absences that is nothing but you know fertile period where we uh, where we prevent the uh, or you know uh, copulation right so we we prevent this uh, day from 10 to 17 we know the ovulation of uh, different types of men, uh, different phases in the menstrual cycle right within this phases of menstrual cycle there is a fertile period right so that we will uh, that we need to uh, you know absentee from the coitus so coitus interrupts and then lactational amenorrhea right <coughs> and using condoms or nirodes right so here the names of it right what is the function of that so male female condoms at the at the same time what is the level of efficiency is what they may ask when it comes to diaphragms whether they are reusable or re reusable right whether they are coming from spermicidal gels or foams that you need to once go through when it comes to iud's is a tricky part you may get confused with the non medicated iud's with the uh, hormone releasing iud's so different types of iud's again put iud's and divide into 1 2 3 non medicated iud's copper releasing iud's hormonal iud's can you give any hormonal uh, releasing iud's example anyone hormonal releasing iud's yeah lng 20 yes that's it guys so these are the questions they may give examples and they give iud's so you have to pick the correct one correct 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 right yes correct right so let's move to the next aspect that is oral contraceptives and you have to remember the government uh, made saheli pill right and what is a uh, method it means the pill we take uh, daily 21 days right so those things you need to remember that number you need to be remembering saheli right and who developed this saheli central drug research in cdra etc lucknow and then injectables what are the injectables and uh, how these injectables can be used and then finally what are the irreversible methods we have vasectomy tubectomy and their uh, uh, you know their efficiency so these are the aspects that you need to cover in the uh, uh, what do you say in the, in the case of uh, what do you say birth control methods right when it comes to mtp right mtp again they may ask in pick the correct statement or incorrect statement out of this question so they may they may give different uh, you know mtp is not banned in india so you have to pick the correct or incorrect statement so what is importance of mtp again they may give different statements from ncert textbook itself they will give okay based upon ncert only they will be asking so whoever doesn't have especially the metric students who doesn't have uh, ncert books right so you can go to the ncert website and you can download all the books or even if you personally uh, message to me i will share the link as well or i will share the link uh, in a group as well right so what is amniocentesis you know about amniocentesis but nothing to be much covered in this amniocentesis but you need to understand whether this amniocentesis is been uh, you know banned or not in the case of uh, 
uh, in the case of uh, India that you need to undergo. And sexually transmitted diseases, what are the different types of STDs we have at the same time different or venereal diseases or sexually transmitted VDs or reproductive tract infections, RTIs, right? So what are the viral, uh, you know, what are the uh, diseases that infections that we cannot really cure at all? So how do we prevent that? So in that you, you may get this, these are all the prevent to uh, correct statements, pick the correct or incorrect statement. HIV can be curable, like that incorrect statement will be there. Like that, you have to pick in this STD kind of a uh, topic. And when it comes to infertility, you guys are very much well with this infertility topic. And it is more confusing also. But each, this assisted reproductive technology arts method, you need to write, like IVF is a common thing for uh, both, uh, you know, uh, ET, GIF 10, UID. Right, so these are the common approach for the, uh, you know, a common ap approach to produce a test tube baby. Right, so when we use GIFT, when we use uh, when we use this uh, zygote intra fallopian transfer and intra uterine transfer, embryo transfer conditions of the female or male, you need to focus. Okay, right. When we use GIFT, what is the condition? Who is the donor? What is surrogacy? Right. Right? At the same time, intracytoplasmic sperm injection. We already talked about intracytoplasmic intra sperm injection. In what condition we use this ICS? IC, SI is what we need to remember. And then we will talk about uh, artificial insemination and then why we use this artificial uh, insemination also. In what condition? For example, the semen collected from husband and donor is artificial. It means uh, why we use this AI is what uh, you need to focus on. Right, and then what are the uh, you know what are the problems? When we talk about problems, they come as a statements. Is it a correct or incorrect? There is no problem. There is no legal problem with uh, a legal pro problem with ARTs. Right? Do you agree with this statement? There are no social. There is no religious. There is no uh, what do you say? Uh, emotional with ARTs. Is this statement correct or incorrect? ARTs has no issues with emotional, religious and social problems. I mean, ART has no... Yeah, okay. Sridaksha saying incorrect. What about others, guys? Yeah, we can wind up the session. This is the last question. That's it. One minute. That's it. Within one minute, we can wind up. Incorrect. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 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 It's in this. It's 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 incorrect. Yeah. Yeah. So with this, we can uh, wind up uh, the session and uh, I'm very happy uh, to interact with you. It's nice to interact with you all, right? At the same time, before you leave, please subscribe to the channel at the same time so that you will get the notification and like the video, right? So I'll be posting six six files today, right? Make you make most of it, okay? And you please get back to me in case of uh, any doubts anytime. Thank you guys and uh, you've been a lovely audience. I can see that uh, very good interaction had happened and I hope this session is really helpful for you guys to have a quick one hour revision with all these uh, two chapters, with these two chapters. So I'm, I'm trying to do my level best with this botany and geology also. So please, uh, and thanks for your kind cooperation. We'll do much better in coming classes. Thank you guys, thank you, see you tomorrow. Thank you, thank you guys.